Welcome to this AP History Lecture on how you do context. So let's talk a little bit about this because I know this can be really tough for a lot of AP students, but it's probably the most important part of history. So you might remember this story. Back in 1976, people came into a movie that they had never seen before. In fact, it would become a movie franchise that we all kind of know and hopefully love, Star Wars. And you know what happens at the beginning of Star Wars. It's that Star Wars crawl, right? But why did they have that? Well, it provided context to all the people coming in. At that time, they had no idea what this was about. But when they entered into the movie, they knew by the time they had finished with this crawl, this was another galaxy far, far away. There was a fight going on between good and evil and that there were these guys named Jedis who were going to be really important. Now they could jump in. If that doesn't get you, let's try this one. Do we know who the Batman really is? Well, yeah, we kind of do, right? Why does the Batman do what he does? Well, we know that a long time ago when he was a kid, his parents were tragically shot in an alleyway by a criminal. And that got Bruce Wayne to want to grow up and get justice for his parents and for everyone else. In other words, we were given the backstory to Batman. Why do we do this? Because it gives us a sense of empathy, perspective, and a sense of purpose in knowing what's going on. We do the same in history. In history, we have something called contextualization and something called historical situation. What are those things? Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off here with contextualization. Contextualization, I want you to think of as more of the broad backstory on what's going on at a particular time period. Give me an example. We just went through a lot of contextualization with what happened with COVID. COVID was all about a global pandemic that showed how interconnected we were, the need for new types of healthcare, and on top of that, it also showed us the inequities that were going on within society. Notice those are really broad types of issues. Now, at the same time, we don't want to make them vague. So you notice that they were concrete. They were specific, but not super specific, not like factual. That's what we want to have at the beginning of our arguments. Now, how do you set that up? No matter what, they always go in the introduction. You want to have three sentences, three issues that are going to set that up and then transition into your thesis. For AP World, what we suggest is that you have global national and local. For AP US, what we suggest you have is international, national, and local. So let me give you a few examples on how you might do this. For AP world history, an example might look something like this. We're going to establish for the empires at our first unit, the overall context would be about trade routes, the synthesis of cultures, and the centralization of empires. For US history, at the very beginning of our of our time of what we've been studying, we could talk about native contacts with Europeans, the building of new empires, family, religious settlements. Notice how broad they are, but we're still keeping it concrete in what we're talking about. Okay, next up is historical situation. What's the difference there? So contextualization was broad. Historical situation is a concrete detail from a time period that influenced the way things happen for people. So remember in our last one, we talked about COVID and about those big, broad pictures that were happening, right? Big healthcare kinds of issues, interconnectedness of cultures and big inequities. But now we're going to get a little bit more specific. Let's talk about vaccines. Vaccines in America helped to reduce the overall disease spreading, right? Vaccines also allowed people to reopen schools and businesses. It also led to a lot of political fights on whether or not everybody should be getting them. The point is vaccines are a much more specific issue. That's an issue that's influencing people that we would call historical situations in the situation. So how do we set this up? In this particular case, we want to identify a fact and then show how that connects to uh, the document that we're analyzing or the example that we're analyzing from the time period. Let me give you a few examples. So in AP world history, if we were talking about the issue of trade routes at the beginning of world history, we might talk about the Mongols reopened the Silk Roads leading to the spread of the Black Death. In document one, the author discussed the effects of the Black Death from trade. Notice the Mongols with the Silk Roads now helps to show the influence on the Black Death. For AP US history, Puritans came to America and settled in strong family units, leading to long-term colonial settlement. In document one, the author notes that the Puritan religious community was centered around religious and family beliefs. Notice the Puritan mindset and their settling of family units helps to identify and influence the document. Okay. So let's wrap this all up and talk about this really quick. When we think of contextualization, when we think of historical situation, what are we doing? First off, history is all about context. The reason why we study history is to show what was going on at the time period and how it influenced people. And even more important, what context demonstrates to us and what was unique at that time period and how they're different from that time period and how people were influenced at that time period. Okay, I'll see you in class.